Hi guys, it's Camille here and this is the 8th review of the International Booker Prize Longlisted Book. Today we're going to talk about The Red Dog by Willem Anka. Have you ever read a book which you thought was brilliant in many ways but at the same time was so intense that you felt at times exhausted by it? But before we go there, we will start with the historical context, as we often do here on this channel, but this time it's a bit shorter one. South Africa before colonization was home to various tribes of Bantu people, until the Cape of Good Hope was discovered in 1488 by Bartolomeu Dias. Can you imagine this situation? The Portuguese were like, Hey, Eureka, we have discovered the Cape of Good Hope. And the Bantu people were like, do you mean that rocky tip over there? Portuguese, yes, we have discovered it. Bantu people, are those Portuguese local? We knew for centuries it was there. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like discoveries, right? Since the beginning of colonization, the southern tip of Africa was an important geopolitical location. There was no Suez Canal yet, so the marine road to India was set all the way around Africa. Therefore, before the Republic of South Africa became the state we know today, the area was ruled by the biggest marine powers of given time. It was ruled by the Dutch since 1652 and then by the British from 1795. White Europeans' migration to that area and taking away the land from various Bantu tribes speed up when the Dutch colonizers arrive. The main protagonist of this novel, Conrad Du Bois, is a historical figure, a descendant of French and Dutch Protestants that arrived in this part of the world in the late 17th century. Now, time for the plot and analysis. I told you, the historical context will be short. <laughs> Red Dog is narrated by Conrad Du Bois and, to be specific, by the ghost, the spirit of Conrad Du Bois. I'm talking about the spirit as even though the novel covers the period of life of Conrad Du Bois, 1761-1814, it's told from the perspective of omnipresent, omniscient, in terms of historical knowledge of the land narrator who not only talks about his life, but Conrad Du Bois' narration has the ability to see into a distant past as well as into the future of South Africa. I mean, seeing into our times. On the second page of this novel, I wrote, is he everlasting? As in this fragment, which is also a brilliant example of how intense, raw, placed and focus demanding the writing is, Du Bois says, May I be whisper you farther. The little hairs in your ear vibrate as my breath comes closer. Migrate with me through human memory, over the unmarked dusty wastes as far as the primal footprint. The first built fire, the troop of ape-like creatures heaving erect in the grasslands. Hear the feet stamping in the caves. See the half-human animals scratching and painting on the rock faces how they trace the trajectories from animal to human, voyages between hand and paw, snout and nose, transition to the other side. I am of this land, bred from stone. The novel captures the life of Conrad Du Bois from his brutal childhood to his death. Wian Anke uses historical materials as well as legends about Du Bois' life to tell this very complex story. Du Bois, larger-than-life character of his era, was a criminal, murderer, freedom fighter, traveler, politician, smuggler, theft, bigamist, and a loving husband of three wives and a father to his multiracial children, 
Only in the era of ever-increasing divisions and separations between Christian land, to use the terminology of the novel, and Kafaria, the Bantu land, also the terminology of the novel. That was the period where human life didn't mean much, and in the geography where law, even though imposed by the British and the Dutch administration, still didn't mean very much. Conrad Du Bois, his life and his family act as sort of a bridge between the two worlds, the Christian land and the Bantu world. William Anker uses that bridge to give us a testimony to the history of the land, showcasing both the white and the black culture. He does that though in a ruthless, feeling like a very truthful to the period way, showcasing both sides without pompousness nor romanticization. When a slaughter takes place, Brace yourself for the slaughter, limbs being cut, women being raped, children ripped apart and burnt on a pile. But when he writes about the landscape, for instance, brace yourself for stunning passages of oddly poetic language. Think Cormac McCarthy, oddly poetic language, in terms of its roughness, connection to the land, brutality, yet still raw transcendent beauty. Some passages felt like taken out from Blood Meridian. Like seriously, I mean like they were taken out from Blood Meridian. Conrad Du Bois, like many of Cormac McCarthy's characters, is a man driven to stay on the outskirts of the society to protect his freedom and never be tamed. The societal ties bound him, and therefore Du Bois is again and again on the move, never settling for more than a couple of years in the same place. He is the man of the land. Land and him are one. Already on the second page that I just read, he said, I am of this land, bred from the stone. And passages reflecting similar connection are found on many pages of this book. Conrad McCarthy is an obvious inspiration for Willem Anke. You feel McCarthy very strongly in the way the language is used, in the way the story of the land is told. If you ever read McCarthy, there's no way you would have noticed that some of it feels dangerously close to McCarthy's writing. Some paragraphs. In the acknowledgments, Anke confirms that McCarthy was his inspiration, but I think Anke might have done himself a disservice, getting a bit too close to McCarthy in a few paragraphs, and that might overshadow some brilliant writing of his own invention, especially Blood Meridian. It's like all over this book. Another book that I was reminded of when I was reading Red Dog was True History of the Kelly Gang by Peter Curry. Although I don't think that was necessary an inspiration, but just the similarity of the topic is very significant. And the topic being the brutal foundational story of given country and fabularization of the lives of those countries sort of founding fathers. Du Bois in case of South Africa and Kelly in terms of Australia. Even though I believe that I would appreciate True History of Kelly Gang more if I read it now. When I read it a few years ago, I was mostly bored with it, with its repetitive nature, repetitive nature of Kelly Gang's escapades. Those felt the same story being told over and over again throughout the novel, and I had similar feelings at times here. Conrad Du Bois' constant resettlement from one place to another to steal more cattle, to participate in another tribal escapade, to lose all he had, to move to another place, to steal more cattle, to kill more elephant, to smuggle more ivory, to lose it all again, to move to another place. I mean, you get the gist of it, right? As much as I was impressed with the quality of the language, the writing, I was still fighting my brain not to drift off when similar escapade was being described again. It's a bit of a shame as there is so much great writing in it and also the fact that in contrast to Carrie, Vilam Anker is describing the black tribe's culture aside of the white one 
And that makes it so much more interesting than if it was just another white outlaw in a cowboy's era story. However, the repetitive nature of this novel takes quite a bit from what would otherwise be rather an impressive book. Am I happy that I read it? Definitely. I believe William Anke is a hugely talented writer and even, even if the reading process was a bit laborious at times, literature is a form of art that sometimes requires a bit of work and that's fine with me. The pleasure in form of constant dopamine hits uh, is not the only feeling Lee needs to serve us, right? I learned a ton and the writing was really great, even if sometimes resembling a tiny bit too close Cormac McCarthy. And don't get me wrong, uh, I love McCarthy, but sometimes it felt a bit too close, maybe. Okay, guys, let me know if you read this book already, let me know if you are planning to read it, and I'll be back with you the coming weekend with the hurricane season. Yeah, beloved by everybody, right? I'm looking forward to read this one, and I will do it today and tomorrow. So, yeah, talk to you soon. I will update the schedule of my reviews down in the box below, because obviously I was a bit late due to that and work. And Thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, thank you for all the comments and likes, that means a ton. If you enjoyed this review, please subscribe and I talk to you soon. Bye bye!